Welcome back to Hoochos. Today on Hoochos, I'm gonna show you how to propagate pineapples and build this. This is an auto refilling rain gutter grow system based wicking grow spike hydroponic system for pineapples. In today's episode, I'm going to show you how to collect the heads of the pineapples, dry them, save them for propagation of your own pineapples so that you can have an abundance of hydroponic pineapples for you and your family to eat. So first things first, I went to the shops and purchased a bunch of pineapples with their heads intact. So here I've got a few different stages of what we're trying to achieve when we're growing pineapples. We've got the actual fruiting stage of the plant where you've got the stalk and the fruit at the top. This actually contains all three portions of what we want to harvest. Obviously you want to harvest the fruit for eating, but you can utilize the top by cutting it and then replanting it. So that's what we're gonna be doing today. I've got some tops here that have been cut and dried out. So that is the first step. These have been left way too long. They're still alive, hopefully, and you can see the roots shooting out from the dried top. Now we wanna get these roots shooting out into a substrate rather than shooting out while they've been dried. To do this, all we're going to do is take our fresh pineapple, we're going to cut the top off, like so. We're just gonna remove all of the flesh that we can, like that, and we'll put that aside and we can eat that now. Now, we're actually going to remove the bottom leaves. So I'm just going to peel back the leaves so that we've got about a centimeter of stalk there. That is going to turn into the part of the pineapple that roots out. I'm now going to dry that, so I'm just gonna put it in a tray ready to dry, and I'm going to do that for all of the pineapples that I've got. I've got approximately eight pineapples that I'm gonna be doing that for, and then we can leave that for about a week so that it dries off. If you want, you can dip this into sulfur to sterilize the tip and also to dry it out. Sulfur acts as a fungicide and it will sterilize it as well. And we can take cuttings from the rest as well. So we'll take a bit off the top of the pineapple, like so. We can just pull the flesh away, like that, and pull away the bottom growth, and we can leave that to dry. Now, if you wanna save the pineapple, don't take the top off like this. Just take the actual stalk off and we can remove the outer leaves the same way. It just doesn't give you as much plant to propagate. Okay, I can leave these to dry for a week and we can move on to planting the ones that I've pre-dried. So with these ones, I'm just gonna remove the dead leaves because there's no need for them. And we're gonna be left with a nice dried stalk like that. And this we can then plant into a moist cocoa mix. Now, I'm actually going to add some scoria into my cocoa because that is gonna be the final product. I'm just gonna do a 25% scoria, 75% uh, cocoa mix. Uh, the final product will be more like 50-50 because they are a bromeliad and they don't particularly like wet feet. We're trying to coax the roots out whilst also not wetting them too much. So this is scoria and it's also gonna give me a bit of weight in this tray, which is good. And this tray has drainage on the top tray and water catchment on the bottom tray. And I'll be purely watering in to start with. So I'm going to water this in first. We can let that drain out, place it into our tray, and then we can just stick in our dried pineapple crowns. So I'm just gonna stick in one in each corner and we can leave those to root in a nice shady area. So I'm gonna put these underneath my NFT. Okay, so it's been about two months since I last filmed that, and you can see the difference in the pineapples that were already existing in the soil pots that I had next to me. I never managed to transplant those plants into um, a hydroponic medium. This size pot I've been really happy with, the pineapples that can produce just with soil. So having hydroponic medium and an, a never ending nutrient resource within the pots, we could actually go smaller, but I do like the size of these pots. And on all of these pineapples, 
I've also got a heap of pups coming off the bottom there. So I'll be cutting these pineapples off, eating the pineapples obviously, and I'll also be replanting the pups into the propagation trays that we set up last time. Now you can see that these plants are doing wonderfully. Now obviously you don't need to leave them the full two months that I have, but we're gonna pull these out in a second, have a look at the roots. And you can see that with the older pineapple heads that had already had roots on them, we have really nice growth. And this is what they were looking like before with the dead ends. Now we have brand new spines coming out the center and these are going to be really nice plants. I left these heads for a week and then planted them once they had sealed on the bottom. And I'll show you what their roots look like. I'm gonna try and do this as fast as possible because that camera is going to overheat. It is bloody hot at the moment. So I'm just gonna pull this tray out and I wonder if we can just, oh, you can actually see on the bottom of that tray, you can see all of the roots coming through. And I've barely watered these. I've just kept the trays moist as, as I possibly can and I've forgotten about them a few times. So I'm just gonna lift them out. Look at that. Fully rooted, how good. You can see there, a really nice, I'm just gonna clean that off into one of our pots. There it is. That has fully rooted out and I am very happy with that. Let's have a look at the bigger ones as well. Wow, look at those roots, how good. And they'll just pull straight out, hopefully. There we have a fully rooted pineapple. And we're going to replant these into, well, I would, I would ideally plant them into a 50-50 mix of cocoa and scoria or something heavy like a stone of some kind. But I'm actually going to be planting these into a mixture of cocoa, perlite and scoria um, to start with because that's what I've got pre-mixed in my mixer at the moment. And then I'm going to move over to a pure cocoa and scoria mix and we can have a look at the difference in the two mixes. Before I do that though, we're actually going to be putting holes in the bottom of our pineapple pots. This is with a 29 millimeter hole saw. This is so that we can put them onto the system that I've designed for them, which I'll show you in a second. It is the gross spike system. And I had no idea because I hadn't actually invented it at the time that I planted these pineapples and I had no idea where I was going to put them but now I think I have the perfect system that will be able to supply nutrients and water to these pots in a really hassle-free way and I don't need to have the system up and running right now. I can just plant these guys in, have the hole pre-drilled, water them from above for a little bit until I find out where I want to plant the system because I'm about to go away on holidays and I want to have these guys potted up and a little bit established, and then I can set up the system that we're going to use for these pineapples. So I'm gonna drill out all my holes, all my pots, fill them up with grow media, and add in our pineapples. Start in forwards and in reverse. And because it's only a 29 millimeter hole, we won't lose too much grow media out of the bottom, and even if a little bit falls out, that'll be taken up by the grow spike anyway. And from here, we can just plant in our pineapples. So it's as easy as taking our pineapple, placing it in, making sure that the roots are all submerged. And I'm just gonna fill around. Just fill in over the top of the roots with our mix. So this mix is 40% scoria, 40% cocoa, and 20% perlite on top, just to add a little bit of air into the mix. But, I don't think we'll need the perlite. I think that the cocoa and the scoria will be absolutely fine. And that's what our plant is gonna look like. So I'll put that aside, we can plant the rest. And they're all rooted out, which is really nice.
So I'm just going to take these pops off by snapping them off. And then we have baby pineapples. <laughs> How good. And I can let them dry out for a week or so, or I might just pop them straight in. And with the heads, we can do the same. I'm just going to pop these straight into my mix, the pops, like so. And with the pineapple heads, I'm actually going to let these dry out because they are a lot more moist. So, so that's what happens when you leave the pineapples. They develop these pups around the bottom. You have so many pineapples. <laughs> we can take the heads off these as well. Then we have two pineapples. <laughs> now these obviously aren't hydro, but how good. Exciting. A taste of things to come. <laughs> Oh, yum. And now I'm going to take these guys to a shady spot. I'm going to water a bit of hydroponic nutrient into each of our, my pots. Then once I've got the system set up and they're a little bit established, we can move them into a hydroponic system. Okay, so it's been a bit over a week since I cut the heads off those pineapples that you saw in the last scene. And as you can see, even without sulfur, the ends have sealed up really nicely and these ones are ready to be planted into our mix. As for the pups coming off the side of the pineapple, I haven't actually checked these yet, so I'm actually quite interested to see how these have gone. So this is after about a week. So as you can see on the bottom of this one, we've got the first roots protruding out of the base of this pup. So it would take at least a week before you get the first roots coming out. Here's another one. You can see the roots just starting to emerge from that pup. And this one too. So I would give these at least a couple more weeks to get more established with roots and then you can transplant. So at the start, I just watered in with water and I've now switched over at about the point where the roots come out. So this is about a week, a week and a half in. I've now switched over to a half strength hydroponic nutrient just to give the roots a little bit of nutrition to seek out. And then after a couple of weeks, you just switch over to full strength hydroponic nutrient to really encourage the growth of these heads. So it's been about a week and a half since I planted all of these pineapples into their pots and I've watered them in with hydroponic nutrient, full strength hydroponic nutrient a few times since. And I'm getting some really nice green crowns on all of the pineapples. So I'm happy with their progress and we can move to the next step which is introducing them into a hydroponic system. Now the hydroponic system that I'm going to be utilizing today is the Grow Spike hydroponic system. This was the terracotta version that we created in my Grow Spike video where I introduced you to that 3D print and I'll be utilizing that 3D print for these pineapples. Now obviously you can do this without a 3D print just by having wicks introduced in the planting phase of the setup. So you would just have the wicks within the pots protruding out um, through a hole that is large enough for the wicks. But this 3D print just makes it a little bit easier so that you can just drop your pot straight over the top of the system. And here I have printed off some grow wicks ready to go so that we can set up our system. All I have to do from here is wick up the print and add it into a rain gutter grow system. So as usual, all of the 3D prints can be found on my Patreon and can be downloaded to be printed at home. So to wick up our grow spikes, we will just use a, a six millimeter wicking cord um, or cotton sash will work just fine. And we can just cut this to length and we just feed that through our grow spike like so. And we can do the same on the other side. Like so. And I'm gonna do that for all of them. 
Okay, so now I've got my 12 grow spikes set up. I can now set up the rain gutter grow system that these are going to sit within. And to achieve this without adding any extra complexity, I'm just gonna dig it straight into the ground. And this is one that I set up earlier. I pre-made a bunch. All I did was I added on my 3D printable end caps that are available for both the Australian and the American pipe sizes. I've siliconed the ends on and added in my tap and my float valve end. Also cutting out a section for the float valve to lay in. I'm just going to lay this down. I actually don't think I need to dig a trench for this. I think it's just gonna sit fine with the pineapples straight on top, which is gonna be way easier. All right, let's get the level. That'll work. <laughs> yeah. Now I don't think they'll fall over, but there's only one way to find out. Okay, so I'm just gonna make sure that this is nice and level. And then I'm going to measure and mark out 12 pot spaces so that we can lay out our pots evenly and drill out a 29 millimeter hole for all of our grow spikes. Now I can drill out all the holes. Now, so start in forwards and then end in reverse. And to this end, I'm going to add in my float valve and connect it up to my 1000 liter hydroponic nutrient reservoir, which will allow this to automatically refill as the plants utilize the nutrient. So to do this, I'm just going to be using some plumber's tape, a 13 millimeter to BSP barbed piece so that I can connect up my 13 millimeter garden hose to this system. Very good. Good girl. I can connect it up, turn it on, and we can make sure that our rain gutter grow system is nice and level. Okay, so it does look like we've got a leak, but that's because I left the tap open at the end. But now I've closed it and We've actually got a really nice water level across the system. It is slightly higher at that end, but that's okay because there's enough water in there to cover the grow spike at the bottom. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to lay out the grow spikes and the nutrient that I've got in here is a 2.4 EC pH between 5.5 and 6.5. And that's the same as all of the systems in this area. All right, so I'm gonna lay out the grow spikes and we can place over the top our pineapples. So, where the hole is on the bottom, the grow spike will just pierce straight into our pot and it will start wicking from the rain gutter below into the base of our pot and it will wick into the cocoa, which will not oversaturate. It will remain moist, but it will not take more water than is required by the plant. So we can place all of our pots over the top of our grow spikes. And that will wick up into all of our pots from below feeding our plants with hydroponic nutrients. And this will also allow us to place and remove pots as we see fit um, in the future. So there's no messing around with net pots. It means we can take our pots off and place them on the ground without having to be careful about a net cup protruding out the bottom of our pot. And there it is an auto refill rain gutter grow system based pineapple wicking hydroponic system. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Who Chose. Happy hydroponicking and I'll see you next time on Who Chose. <laughs>